All right, so I've got all of the studs and nuts uh, off the car. Awesome, and off the old cat. Um, I just realized I've got one more little problem, which is that uh, when this stud came out, it came out, um, I was trying to get the nut off, but the stud just came out instead. So now uh, I need to get the nut off of the stud so I can clean them. Um, so I'm gonna try a little penetrating oil and then a um, socket wrench to hold the seven millimeter hex on the end and then a open-ended uh, crescent wrench on the nut and hope for the best. <laughs> So 15 millimeter crescent wrench. There we go. Can you see what I'm doing there? I've got the crescent wrench basically uh, up against the ground and I'm uh, pushing down on the socket. Again, there at the end. There we go. Ta da! Finally. Alright. So now, those are the two, two studs from the, uh, the exhaust side, the back end, and then these are the three studs that connect the, the cat to the um, exhaust manifold. So these two like regular nuts go uh, with the long ones and then these three with the little like, I don't know what you call that, a flange or something on the, on the end of the nut go with the exhaust manifold studs. Alright, I'm going to take them in and clean them. Alright, so I'm going to try to uh, get the rust off of all these uh, studs and nuts from under the car. Um, so I've just got a mason jar here. Uh, I've seen other people use just a plastic bottle. Uh, this is just what I've got around. So I'm gonna put all these in here. Good. And then I've got some apple cider vinegar, organic of course, only the best for our nuts and bolts here. And I'm just going to cover these guys. Let's see if that's enough. Yeah, that'll do it. Great. And then I'm going to let that sit probably uh, overnight. And uh, apparently um, it's a good idea to swish it every now and then. Um, check on those in the morning. All right, so uh, I've left it for uh, a couple days now. Um, not really on purpose, just because that's how long it's taken me to get around to it. Um, I think doing it just overnight is actually fine, is enough. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do here is uh, drain out the uh, the cider vinegar and then um, uh, rinse everything off with just some uh, clean water. Alright, then I'm gonna get some baking soda. Alright, 
Just adding a little baking soda here. Balance out the vinegar. and put them on uh, some paper towels and spray them down with WD-40. Okay, so I just dumped out the rest of the water. Kind of dry these guys off real quick. Those look pretty good. pretty covered. Cool. I think that's will do it. So these are my uh, O2 sensors that I pulled out um, and uh, I wanted to share a couple things that I learned. Um, so the first is that apparently the this the error code that I'm getting can actually be caused by uh, clogged O2 sensors. Um, that would suck if that was actually the, like the only problem and the cat was fine. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so the shop said that they would clean the O2 sensors for me just in case they were they were gunked up. So I went online and I I read up on uh, cleaning these guys, and um, uh, it seemed to be the consensus that like yeah you could you could try to clean them you could use some solvents. Um, the thing is, this little thing at the end here, that's not actually the sensor. That's just like a steel cap that's protecting the sensor. So the sensor is inside there. Um, and because of this little shield, uh, you have no way of knowing um, whether you've actually managed to get all the gunk off of the O2 sensor. So a lot of people were saying like, yeah, you could try, but it's, it's kind of impossible to like to thoroughly clean these things and guarantee that you're going to get them clean. Um, so I kind of chickened out. I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to mess with that. I didn't want to like um, try cleaning them and fail. So I found actually you can just get replacement O2 sensors for like 30 bucks each on Amazon. Um, so it's a little extra money, but uh, gives me some uh, peace of mind. So I went ahead and did that. So I think it's finally time to start putting everything back together. Um, I'm going to start by putting the, uh, the studs back in into the uh, exhaust manifold. So these are the ones uh, on the engine side of the cat. Um, and uh, I'm going to apply a little uh, anti-seize uh, to these guys um, so that uh, hopefully if they have to come out again later down the road they'll be uh, um, in better shape. Alright, so to put the anti-seize stuff on I'm just going to put like a little dab uh, on the threads and uh, they will um, when I screw them in, the the compound will work its way onto the rest of the threads. Might be a little too much, I don't know. That looks alright. Alright, so I don't know. No idea whether this is gonna work or whether this is even really important. But I've got uh this orange stuff is the previous gasket it's like stuck to the exhaust manifold it's a little paint scraper and I'm gonna yeah, it doesn't really seem to be coming off if nothing else I guess hopefully that made the surface a little more smooth um, cool so let's see I'm going to put the new studs in. I've got, I also have my new gasket. Um, I don't think I need to put the gasket on first. Yeah, it looks like the, the holes in the gasket are, are pretty big, so I could slide that guy down after the studs are in. I think it'll be easier to just put the studs in by themselves. Top one.
Dang. All right, it's about as far as I can hand fit in that. Got that lubricant all over my fingers, awesome. There we go, that one's going in pretty happily. That one went in nicely too. So it's just this top guy that kind of is resisting me. So let me see if I've got my ratchet in here. I may have it already. It's not looking like it. Oh wait, there you are. Boom. Got my uh, seven millimeter hex ratchet. Get this last guy tightened down. Going in easy with the ratchet. Like really easy. I if it's, still can't hand tighten it, but the ratchet's working great. A smaller handle would probably get me through this quicker. Painfully slow. I have a pair of car gloves, whatever you call those, but I have not been able to find them this whole project. <laughs> oh. yeah, now it's back to being loose enough to hand tighten. Alright, yeah, I don't know how like how tight these guys need to be in there. And this isn't it's gonna be the nut at the end I think that's really needs to get tightened down to hold all this together. I'm just gonna tighten until it's a little hard. There we go. Sweet! Got my studs back in. Looking good. Let's see if that gasket just slides on now. Gasket, I have no idea what it's made out of. It's not rubber. Alright, cool. It's good enough. Push it on all the way when I get the cat up there. Sweet. Alright, so I'm thinking while well, I've still got this thing off the car, I might as well put the uh, O2 sensor in it uh, since that's probably easier now than. Since it's under there. So, um, this guy's got a little cap on it, and they actually already put a little um, NIC stuff on there for me, which is nice. Just turn that way. So, I'm going to try And then, uh, maybe I'll give it one last little twist with the um, O2, this guy, little O2 sensor socket. So, that was with the, with the uh, hex side down. That was my mistake. There we go. Fits right in. Right. I'll just give that a quick tighten. Alright. Good enough. 